We're talking on this program each day about how our personalities are intended to operate. We're discussing this in connection with the main topic of the broadcast over the past eight or nine months, which is, what is the meaning of life? Uh, why are you alive? Uh, why are you here? Why am I in existence? Uh, how did we ever come to be here? And we've talked about the origins of life and what we believe is the reason for accepting that there is an intelligent person behind the universe. And if you want to follow through those intellectual bases of our discussion, then please do write for some of the cassettes of those early broadcasts. However, we have reached the point now where we have said that we believe that we are here created by a personal being who actually loves us and who created us to be his friends. And that's why we're here. And we're here to become completely like him. He has made us with the same capacities as himself so that we could live with him forever and develop the universe in an infinite way with him. But he has given us just the capacities to be like him. The choice to be like him is ours. And of course, he had to give us that free will so that we would truly be like him because he is a self-determining being. And so our task here on this earth is to do what he has put us here to do. And in the process of that, he will make us completely like himself. So we have been discussing now how our personalities were meant to work. And of course, it's a rational and relevant question for many of us today who wonder at times, well, uh, did I do that just because I was emotionally stimulated? Or did I act on that just because I was tired? Or did I do that just because I had analyzed the thing and thought it was the wise thing to do? So many of us, I think, have those kinds of questions. We wonder, now, why did I do that? And what would be the right thing to do? And the question comes up continually, how is my personality meant to work? How are the various parts of it meant to relate to each other so that I will perform as an integrated, mature person. And so that's why we've started to look at the outline of the personality that is presented by our Creator through His Son and the things that His Son said. And of course, you remember how we examined the historicity of this man who lived in the first century who was so different from all the other religious leaders in that he destroyed death. All of them, including Muhammad and Buddha, died just like the rest of us and were buried and were never seen again. But this man had obviously the ability to destroy death and to come back to life. And when we were examining the documentary evidence and the manuscripts that substantiate his existence and the kind of person he was, we began to realize that there is not only his explanation of the way our personalities were meant to work, but that of his followers and indeed of his predecessors in a book which we have known for many years, of course, as the Bible. And so we've been looking at that to see what God's own explanation of our personalities was and how they were meant to operate. And you remember how we have come up with the fact that he has made us on three different levels of life. We have physical life, our bodies and our five senses through which we perceive the world of things and people and circumstances. And then we have inside that, as it were, our soul. Uh, that is uh, suke in Greek, uh, but uh, psychological it becomes in our English translate in our English sound changes, and it means, of course, the psychological part of our being, things like our mind and our emotions and our will, and then inside that again we discovered there is a level of life that is deeper than the other two, and that is the level of the spirit, and the spirit is the real you, the very essence of you. You as you really are when you're alone and no one else is present. 
And that's the part of you that contacts God, your spirit. And so we've been talking about the makeup of the spirit as uh, being capable of communing with God, of getting to know God. So it has the ability of communion and it has the ability to know by intuition what God wants us to do. And then it has the ability through conscience of judging our actions in the light of that information. And then, of course, when we move to our soul, we find that there is a will that has the ability to choose and make decisions. There is the mind which is able to evaluate and reason and perceive relations and correlates. And then there are the emotions which are able to feel desires, uh, feel feelings, uh, feel affection for people. And then there is the body itself which is able to communicate with the outside world. And if you wanted to see how the majority of us live, you would simply divide a page into three, into three sections. And in the top section, you would put the body. And in the middle section, you would put the soul. And in the bottom section, you would put the spirit. And you would simply draw an arrow from the body right through the soul to the spirit. And that's exactly the way most of us live today. That is, we live from the body, from outside to the inside. That's what we try to do when we take cocaine. We try to stimulate the body with a chemical so that the emotions will be elated, so that somehow we're hoping that we will get to the level of spirit and somehow con tact the transcendental power behind the universe. Of course, it won't work because actually by living through our bodies, influencing our souls continually, our spirits have become virtually dead altogether. That's why some of us have great difficulty finding ourselves. We wonder who we are because our spirit is virtually non-existent. It exists a little in the sense of conscience at times. Uh, some women and women's intuition sense a little of intuition. But few of any of us actually have any of the spirit alive as far as communion with the Creator is concerned because we've been utterly dominated by the body. The body sees that it needs rest and so it goes to bed. It feels the emotions are heavy because it itself feels tired and so it goes to bed often. You must admit many of us go to bed just because we're depressed or because we can't face life anymore so that often our body lies heavily on our emotions and depresses them completely and utterly. And then, of course, what we do is we try to take stimulants to stimulate our body, hoping that by that means we'll somehow rise our emotions. And so we keep pulling our souls up by virtue of our bodies until, of course, our bodies are worn out and our souls are worn out because our soul was never meant to be dominated by the body like that. It was meant instead to work from the inside out. In other words, our personalities were meant to work exactly the opposite. If you take a page, divide it into three, and then on the top piece, put spirit. And in the middle space, put soul. And in the bottom space, put body. And then draw an arrow from the top, from the spirit, right through the soul to the body. That's the way we were meant to operate. Actually, from the inside out, from our spirits. Our spirits were meant to dictate to our souls, and our souls then would operate our bodies. And of course, the result of this would be our bodies would be under the control of our minds and emotions. But our minds and emotions themselves would be under the control of our spirits. In other words, we were actually meant to work from the inside out, not from the outside in. And when we work from the outside in, from the body to the soul, we find that the spirit is virtually dead completely. And we feel a great emptiness inside us. As you do, you remember when you have a tremendous night at a party and you drink uh, a number of whiskeys and sodas and you come home elated 
and then you get to bed and you get up in the morning, first of all, the body feels wretched, as you know, then there feels a great emptiness inside your life. You feel, what is it all in aid of? It's interesting that it's particularly at those times when we stimulate the body to stimulate the soul that the spirit feels the greatest emptiness. Because, of course, it is empty. It's not being used. It's not being exercised. It's hardly alive at all. Let's talk a little more tomorrow about the way it was meant to operate.